exercising, you need, it's important that you take a moment to focus your mind and your body. There's a number of ways of doing this. You can, uh, well, I mean, you can pray, which I'm not a big fan of, but I do enjoy some meditation. And it could be said that prayer is, in fact, a form of meditation. Meditation, I think, should generally be done outside, regardless of weather conditions. This is a sense of bringing you into your environment, into the real world. Now, when I meditate, I try to do it outdoors as much as I possibly can, unless, of course, you live in an area where, you know, if you go outside in the dead of winter, it will kill you. Don't do that. Don't think you're going to be all tough. Now, meditation is a really, really simple thing that a lot of people have put in way too much effort in trying to explain. So I will give you my method of meditation and see where we can go from there. Now, when I meditate, I go to an outside spot, like uh, my meditation spot is over here. You must find a position that you can sit in comfortably for a long period of time. That's it. There's no real rules for this. If you have a bad back or whatever, you have to sit on a chair or on a stool or on a piddle, pillow. That's, that's all fine. Okay, so you find a spot. Me, I like to sit cross-legged. Take a moment, relax yourself, a few deep breaths. <sighs> relax the body, realize that, prepare yourself for meditation. Some people say you should put a lot of effort into approaching the place where you meditate. Sure, that's cool. I mean, you will develop, by doing this every day, you'll develop a number of different ways to do this, to approach your meditation. Whatever works for you, and provided you do it every day, that's all that matters. Now, with meditation, the goal is to do nothing, which you would think would be relatively easy to do, but in fact, it is not very easy to do. Our minds are so saturated with media and advertising, very, very difficult to empty yourself. We need something to focus on. So to do this, some people say to use a candle. I use my breathing. You sit very calmly. You can either keep your eyes open or closed, whatever you prefer. And you just breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Some people advise you should stick the tongue, base your tongue into the tip of the roof of your mouth. Uh, kind of like that. Relax. Now, me, when I do it, I uh, generally breathe in and out through my nose because I find it too complicated to try to remember which area to breathe through. But you have to sit with your back straight so that you don't have bad posture. So it's easy for you to breathe. Relaxed. Focus on the breathing. In and out. You don't control your breathing. You're just aware of it. If you find yourself thinking about stuff, getting stressed about stuff, forget about it because it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is your breathing. In and out. In and out. You don't control it. You're aware of the transition. When do you stop breathing in? And when do you start breathing out again? When do you stop breathing out and breathe in again? You don't control that. You're just aware of it. Spend time thinking about that. That's it. That's all there is to it. That's the big mystery with meditation. Gradually over time, you'll find that thoughts come in. When thoughts come in, don't try to resist them. Just let them go. Let them release out into the environment. That's all there is to meditation. Meditation has been practiced for thousands of years, and the health benefits are still being discovered today. It's something that costs nothing, is easy to do, and anyone can do it. But no one really, well, very few people really do do it. So it's something that I think all wogs should practice. What do you want? You've got to ask yourself what you want. Chances are you don't want anything right now. Right now you're just listening to what I say. And based upon what I say, you're going to turn determine what you want. Why? Because you're waiting for input for me to give this to you. This is all part of media peer pressure. There's so much media saturation going everywhere. All i got to do is broadcast enough messages on enough venues, on the billboards, on the milk crates, on your car, everywhere. Well, you just can't get away from it. It's everywhere you look. Is this media peer pressure trying to make manufacture wants inside of you. That's what peer pressure is. Is everyone going, you want to have this, you want to try this? You want to do this? You want to do this? Sure enough, yeah. Okay, well, I want to do this because I want to fit in. That's what it is. And it bugs me. I hate that. I hate the fact that people get so manipulated by the media. Everyone, you know, they, they don't have any wants. People are generally just interested in getting some sleep and getting laid. That's about it. Maybe have a beer once in a while, have some food. But for some reason, we got all these reasons for all these different medias to want. We got all these different methods to want. We have all these ways that we want to, you know, have different things. We got to have the right flavor, right clothing, right everything we have to have in order to get laid, get happy, get a family, get a job. You need to have all all these things and it's bullshit. It's all manufactured. You don't need any of it. The only thing you need to do is listen to the self. What are you waiting for me to tell you? What you want? Do you want me to tell you what you want? Buy only what you want. That's the idea. In order for them to make you spend your money, they have to make you want stuff. The first necessity of facilitating a sale is to create want within the consumer. That's a law. They can't get away from that. So no matter how hard they try, they will make you want stuff. And you've done it for so long. There's so many TV screens everywhere that you will want what they tell you to. Because it's hot. Because some chick is sitting on a beach and somehow that relates to an odor. I have no idea how that works, but apparently you see it in perfume ads all the time. Jeans. 
You know? What the hell? Nobody cares about what kind of supermodel wanders around wearing what kind of cologne. It's ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense. And I don't know why people do it. I don't know why people put up with it. I don't know why people just kind of roll over and take it. But they do. They spend $150 on a pair of jeans. How does that work? I don't understand it, but it seems that they do. So my message to you, ladies and gentlemen, what you want to do is buy only what you want. That's the rules. My name is Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. Realistically, each of us, all wogs, are really elaborate biological meat robots for the brain. You could cut off my hands and I'd still be Sean. You could cut off my arms and I'd still be Sean. You'd cut off my arms and legs and then I'd be Art. No, I'm kidding. But if you were to uh, take away most of my physical body, I would still essentially be me. The you, as you understand it, is inside your head. But where exactly inside your head? Is it, uh, you know, is it, is it here? Is it the face? If you cut all my skin off, am I still me? Obviously it is. And there's been much written on this. Big fan of the Ghost in the Shell anime series. They deal a lot with that kind of concept in there. There's also any number of like philosophers throughout history, everybody from Plato to Thoreau has discussed these kinds of concepts. But what I found is, is that there's a massive amount of, well, just a lack, this unbelievable lack of attention being paid to the brain. The brain is an organ. Just like any other organ in the human body, it must be looked after. But since, unlike the muscles in your hands or your arms or what have you, you can't really exercise it in a visual way so you can say, check out how big my brain is. Now, you can go to universities and there are professors and people with all kinds of certificates and tickets on their walls who spend far too much time reading and, you know, talking, reading some more and talking some more and never actually doing any living in life. So they become these university and, and, you know, highly enlightened thinkers and stuff like that that are so isolated from the real world that their minds, although very beautiful and perfect in their own right, are not really that applicable. So how is a wog supposed to be able to figure out how to keep his brain in shape? How is he going to be able to handle the stresses that are put on the human brain today? You got to think, more things have been invented in the last 50 years than in the history of the world. We're, our culture is accelerating at a pace that is out of control. And our process of our culture is handled exclusively by our brains. Our more is demanded of the human mind and the human brain today than at any other time in history. Is it any wonder why suddenly the pharmaceuticals and core political companies are able to broadcast and sell these these ideas that, oh, you're, uh, you're obviously, you can't cope with society because, well, you know, you're sick. And since you're sick, we'll give you this medicine. And they're selling their snake oil to everybody, when realistically, all you need to do is look after your mind. Nobody likes to think of their minds as being, well, weak. No one wants to be weak-minded. But realistically, every single mind is weak. No mind is unhackable. My mind isn't bulletproof. Your mind isn't bulletproof. Every mind has its limitations. And not knowing what your limitations are is just as dangerous as, uh, you know, having no concern whether or not you have concern for your mind your mind's limitation. You see what I'm saying? If you don't look after what you do with your brain, you're going to wreck it. One day you realize, holy cow, you know, it's like all these extreme sports guys who uh, get into that free rock climbing thing and they climb up the side of the cliff and they're like, yeah, I just got my chalk bag and, you know, I don't really care because I'm good enough and they don't recognize that, you know, perhaps something could go wrong, something could break somewhere along, something unforeseen, variable X, and suddenly they fall. And that happens to people all the time. Can be anything. Could be something as relatively minor as, uh, well, you, you lose your job, which is a minor thing, but people seem to think it's their be-all, end-all of existence, or it could be a major thing like the death of a loved one, and people's brains just wig out. If you look in your own life, you'll find lots of examples of people who were going along great, and then something happened, and BAM! Suddenly they changed as people. Sometimes it's a major event, like them going to war, or something to that effect. Sometimes it could be a minor event. It's either a software or a hardware thing. Maybe it's a car accident. Maybe they hit their head, and now, you know, they've just never been the same sense. This is all because of the mind and care and feeding of the brain. Now, physically, you know, other than saying wear a helmet, there's really not much I can do for the physical health of the mind, other than, of course,